Let's derive a function by using first principles. But before this, we're going to learn what is the meaning of gradient first. So gradient is nothing but just a change in y divided by the change in x. So this triangle means the change. So as we know, if you want to find the gradient, we need to have at least two points. So let's say now we have A and B. So to find the gradient is just to find the change in y and the change in x. So let us start with 6 minus 4 to represent our change in y and 3 minus 2 to represent our change in x. So we just compute these values, then we have 2. So these two represent that every of the x increases by 1 unit, the y will be increases by 2 unit. So as we can see here, when the x value increases from 2 to 3, our y value will increase by 2, which is 4 plus 2 is 6. So this is why the third start, x increases by 1 unit, we give the y increases by 2 unit. And one more thing that we need to know is, for a straight line, the gradient is always constant. So let's say this gradient is 2, here is also 2, here is also 2, the gradient never change for a straight line. Meanwhile, if you look at the gradient of a curve, can you see that the gradient is keep on changing? So let's say here is a negative gradient. Meanwhile, going up is represented by a positive gradient. And whenever we have a steeper line, the value is going to be bigger. When we have a flatter line, means it's not so steep, the gradient is going to be a smaller value. At, at one turning point, the gradient is supposed to be zero because it's almost like a flat horizontal line. And as we know, horizontal line have a zero gradient. So now I'm curious to find the gradient of a specific point. But just now we just mentioned that in order to find gradient, we need to have at least two points. So how is it possible for us to find a gradient on a specific point? Let's see now. So let's say now I want to find the gradient at a specific point when x is equal to 1. So as we know, we find two points first and see what is the gradient. So let's say this gradient is 3, and when we have two points connecting like this, because this line is a second line. So let us try to move the point closer to 1. Let's say we have 1.5, now the gradient is getting lower. So let's try to become closer again. Hey, it's getting lower and lower. So means it's not so steep as before. So when we try to find almost as near as one, we have the gradient to become two. So this one we can see that it's so small that it try to approach one to be just one point. So this is how we can find the gradient of a specific point. But this is not close enough. So what should we do? Try to be as close as possible, but not touching the line. Ah, we just learned this one. This is way we can use limit. So this limit just tells us that the difference in x means that the difference in x, try to be as close as zero means that it's almost no gap in between. Then we can say that particular change is the gradient. So let us try to see this one. Let's say any point on the curve represented by x and y, in order to find the gradient at the specific point, we are first using the concept of a second line where we connect two of the points. And this point, we have some of a difference as compared to the original point that we choose. And this difference is so small because it's a delta x. So this delta is eventually means a small change. So this x means that it's a very small change in x and a very small change in y. So that's why the new coordinate is going to be x plus delta x and y plus delta y. So as we know, in order to find the gradient, just using the change in y and change in x. So the change in y is going to be y plus delta y minus y. And the change in x is going to be x plus delta x minus x. So after we simplify it, we will have delta y over delta x. And this is supposed to be our gradient for this second line. 
But the thing here is, our objective is just want to find the gradient of the specific point. So what should we do? We will try to pull our point to be as close as possible to this point so that they literally becomes merged to become one point. And this, only, this only can be achieved by using the limit function. So, means that, so we're going to use limit to try to say that our delta x is going to be approach zero. Means that there's no gap in between the two points. It looks like just one point. So this is why we can say that the limit as the delta x approaches zero, then the delta y over delta x just represent the gradient at x. So let us look at this curve now. This is the curve of x squared. When we try to look closer and we want to find the gradient that is specific at point x is equal to 1. So like usual, we're going to find the gradient of a second line first. So the second line, we have the two points where the small change in y and the small change in x. And we try to pull the point to be as close as possible to x. How should we do? We are using the limit function. So this is the overall concept to find the gradient at a specific point. So let's go for the calculation part now. So let me zoom in the second line again. So usually we start with the grade, we start with the equations that they're given to us. So in this case, the grade, the curve is eventually represented by y is equal to x squared. And next we're going to form our second equations by just plus the delta y plus the delta x for the our point here. So basically this one is represented by the original one and we're going to find what is the equations when we have applied the small change in y and small change in x. So after that, we just need to expand this one. After expansions, we have this as our equations. So now we have two equations. This is the original and this is the one that after we apply the small change. And what should we do is, we just do the simultaneous between the two equations. So let's say this is the first equations and this is the second equations. And we have the equation two minus the first equations. So y plus delta y minus y, we left with delta y. x squared minus x squared means that we have no more x squared. So the leftover is just 2x delta x plus delta x square. So this is what we have as the product. So once we have the delta y now, so if you still remember, we said that the gradient is represented by delta y over delta x. So the left and right hand side is going to be divided by delta x now in order to find the delta y over delta x. And we know we can simplify it by delta x and delta x cut off. Same thing here. So this one left with only one delta x. So let's clean it up a little bit. So now we have delta y over delta x is equal to 2x plus delta x. So this is still not good enough because this delta x is still rather big for us. So we are going to use limit functions to pull the delta x to be as close as zero. So when we try to make the delta x to become zero, so this becomes zero. And now we will have our gradient functions. And this gradient function act like a master key. Why? Because after we have these functions, we can find the gradient of a point, no matter which point do we want. Let's say I want to find what is the gradient when x is equal to 1? Huh? Just substitute x equal to 1 into the equations. We know the gradient is 2. So what if now I want to find the gradient which the point is x equal to negative 5? Same thing. We just substitute the x equal to negative 5. We know the gradient when the point is at negative 5, the gradient is negative 10. Hey, if you have any questions or would like to see any kind of video, do leave your comments below and let me know. If you want to support us so that we could make more videos like this, the simplest way is just by sharing the video with your friends. Click the like buttons and consider subscribe to this channel. See you in the next video.